Welcome to part two of the deep dive series focusing on the admin panel. The series was created with new agents in mind, providing a full overview of the tabs and configurations of the admin panel. In this video, we are diving into the settings tab. Starting with the company section, in the basic information tab, you can set your company's information. This information can later be pulled into email templates for user and agent alerts, as well as responses if desired. You can customize the fields listed here by going to the Manage tab, Forms, then Company Information form. For full details on customizing forms, see our tutorial linked in the description, all about forms and fields. The Site Pages tab is where you will set the default pages of your help desk. The landing page is the body of text that is displayed on the front page of your user portal. The offline page is displayed when your help desk is turned to offline. Offline just means that the user portal will be disabled for use. The thank you page is displayed to the user directly after ticket creation. This message can include the ticket number as well as any other information of your choice. You can customize these pages by going to the admin panel, manage tab, pages. The logos tab is where you will set the logos displayed on your help desk. Supported format types include GIF, JPEG, and PNG. When adding your own custom logo, it is recommended that you size your image as close to the default image size. This size is listed when hovering over the help tip. You have the option to set two different logos for the agent side and user side if preferred. After adding a logo, you will select where you want the logo to be displayed. The Login Backdrop tab is where you will set the background image that is displayed at the staff login page. For this image, the supported formats are also GIF, JPEG, or PNG. It is recommended to keep this image under a megabyte for the fastest load times of this page. Now let's go through the system section. Here is where you will set your help desk settings and preferences. In the first section, you have your general help desk settings. Help desk status is where you can enable or disable the user portal. If the status is changed to offline, the client interface will be disabled and only admins will be able to access the system. The help desk name is the name that is listed at the bottom of the help desk for both the user portal and staff control panel. The default department is the department the tickets will be automatically routed to for tickets created via email. This default department is only set if the system email does not already have a default department set. Collision avoidance duration is the maximum length of time that an agent is allowed to hold a lock on a ticket or task without any activity. This configuration goes hand in hand with the lock semantics feature, which allows you to have tickets locked when two agents are currently viewing or typing a response to the same ticket. You can enter zero to disable the lockout feature. The default page size is the number of items shown per page in the ticket queues in the staff panel. Each agent can also customize this number for their own account under My Preferences. You can set the page size to 50 to see the maximum number of tickets per page in your ticket queue. The default log level determines the minimum level of issues which will be recorded in the system log. Debug represents the least severity, and error represents the greatest. For example, if you want to see all issues in the system logs, choose Debug. Purge logs allows you to determine how long you would like to keep system logs before they are deleted. You can disable auto purging by selecting Never Purge Logs. We have an entire video all about system logs linked in the description. Show avatars determines if avatars are visible in the thread view of tickets. The avatar source can be set in agents and users settings pages, which I will show you later in the video. Enable rich text allows you to enable HTML and thread entries and email correspondence. If this setting is disabled, only plain text will be permitted. If you'd like to embed the help desk into your external website, you can do so with the use of iframe. To set this up, you'll enter a comma separated list of URLs for the system to be framed in. If left empty, the system will default to self. This accepts domain wildcard, HTTP, HTTPS URL scheme, and port numbers. Along with that configuration, there is also embedded domain whitelist, which is where you can enter a comma separated list of domains to be whitelisted for iframes used in the system. The ACL feature allows you to restrict access to the help desk to only those with permitted IP addresses. To set this up, you will enter a comma separated list of IP addresses to allow access to the system. There are also four options to choose from for which panels to apply the ACL to specifically. Now let's take a look at the time and date options. First, you can set the default locale according to your preference. Next, you can set the default time zone for your help desk. Agents and users can also set their own personal time zone preferences from their profile listed in the top right corner of the user portal and staff control panel. 
Next, you can set your date and time format. The format can go off of your default locale settings, or you can manually customize the format by selecting Advanced. Default schedule is an optional configuration. Schedules are associated with service level agreements. Here you can choose the default schedule to be used by SLAs when rendering tickets overdue. This setting is overridden when the SLA has a specified schedule. Under System Languages, you can set the primary system language for your help desk to be displayed in. This is the language that will be displayed by default to all agents and users unless they set their own language preference. Adding secondary languages allows your agents and users the ability to select their own language preference to view the system in. Agents and users can set their own preferences from within their profile. Users can also easily switch to their preferred language from the user portal by selecting a flag at the top of the user portal. The last section here is where you will configure the storage and settings for attachments. Specifically, this is where you can set the maximum file size limit for attachments uploaded by agents. Login required allows you to require login for agents and users to view attachments on tickets. The ticket section is where you can customize the default ticket options, configure user and agent alerts, as well as where you can globally customize the columns and queues of the help desk. Default ticket number format is where you can customize the ticket number format for the ticket numbers that are auto-generated upon ticket creation. Use hash signs where you want the digits to be placed. Any other text such as numbers, letters, and symbols will be preserved. You also have the option to customize the ticket number format at the help topic level. Default ticket number sequence is where you can define the sequence from which to derive new ticket numbers. The system has an incrementing sequence and a random sequence by default but you can create as many custom sequences as you wish. Top level ticket counts is where you can enable or disable the view of ticket counts on main level ticket queues. For example, you can have them appear without ticket numbers listed until you hover over the queue, or you can have the numbers right on display. You can set a default status to be automatically applied to incoming tickets. This can be defined for each help topic if desired, or it can also be overridden by a ticket filter. You can set a default priority to automatically apply to incoming tickets. This can also be defined for each help topic or system email address if desired, or it can be overridden by a ticket filter. You can set a default service level agreement to be automatically applied to incoming tickets. This can also be defined for each help topic if desired or overridden by a ticket filter. You can also set a default help topic to be automatically applied to incoming tickets. This is useful for tickets created via email if there is not a default help topic set at the system email address level. This can also be overridden by a ticket filter. I mentioned lock semantics earlier, where you can enable locks to display on tickets when more than one agent is viewing or responding to a ticket at the same time. Default ticket queue is where you can select the queue of your choice to be displayed when viewing the tickets tab of the agent panel. Maximum open tickets is where you can define the maximum number of tickets that an end user is allowed to open at one time. Once the user reaches the set limit, any future ticket creation attempts will be denied until their other tickets are closed. You can set this to zero to disable the maximum open ticket limit. Human verification is where you can enable CAPTCHA for tickets created via the user portal. Collaborator ticket visibility. Check this box if you want users to have visibility to all tickets that they are collaborators on when signing into the web portal. If this is not checked, the user will only see the tickets that they are the ticket owner of. Claim on response. Check this box to auto assign unassigned tickets to the responding agent. Note, reopen tickets are always assigned to the last responding agent unless auto assign on reopened is disabled at the department level. Auto refer on close, check this box to auto refer tickets to the assigned or closing agent when a ticket is closed. This is necessary when you want to give agents with limited access continued access to tickets after they're closed. Require help topic to close, check this box if you wanna require agents to set a help topic on tickets prior to closing them. Allow external images. Check this box if you want to allow external inline images that have valid image extensions. For example, PNG, JPEG, and GIF. If unchecked, the system will exclude any external inline images. In the attachment section, you can set the attachment configurations for tickets. Select config next to ticket attachment settings to make changes. To enable attachments on tickets regardless of channels, check this box. Next, you can set the maximum file size limit. Please note the maximum limit available is determined by your subscription level. The basic level allows up to 2 MB, standard allows up to 8, and premium allows up to 16 MB. 
Next is optional, configuring file types to restrict or add additional file types to allow. You can also optionally set a maximum number of files that a user is allowed to upload. Lastly, you can optionally include help text regarding the attachments to display upon ticket creation. Now let's review user and agent alerts. The autoresponder tab is where you will configure the auto responses that can be sent to users. New ticket is the auto response confirmation that is sent to the ticket owner when they create a ticket themselves. New ticket by agent is the auto response confirmation that is sent to the ticket owner when an agent creates a ticket on their behalf. New message submitter is the auto response that is sent out when a new message is appended to an existing ticket. New message participants is the auto response that is received from the message submitter to all other participants on the ticket, such as collaborators. Over limit notice is the auto response that is sent to the user if they have reached their maximum number of open tickets allowed. These auto response template messages can be fully edited by going to the emails tab, templates. Alerts and notices are alerts that can be sent out to agents. You can individually define who will receive alerts for each type of alert available. The new ticket alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when a new ticket has been created. New message alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when a new message has been added to a ticket by a user or collaborator. New internal activity alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when internal activity such as an internal note or agent reply is added to a ticket. Ticket assignment alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when a ticket is assigned to them or the team they belong to. Ticket transfer alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when a ticket is transferred between departments. Overdue ticket alert is the alert that is sent out to agents when a ticket surpasses its due date, which is set automatically based on the ticket's SLA. Lastly, you have system alerts, which are significant system alerts that are sent out to the system administrator. The queues tab is where you can customize the ticket queues of your help desk. From here, you can globally customize the queues available and their criteria, including the columns. You can also create custom sorting options as well as customize the export picker, which is the data selector presented when exporting tickets. The tasks section has a few tasks specific configurations available, including the ability to set custom tasks number formats like you can with tickets, and you can set a default priority for tasks if desired. In the attachments section, you can enable the ability to add attachments to tasks as well as configure the visibility and editability of attachments in tasks. You also have an alerts and notices tab for tasks, which is where you can configure the task specific alerts like you can with tickets. In the agents tab, there are agent specific configurations available. Name formatting is where you will set the format of the agent names that will be presented throughout the system. Email templates will use it for names as well if no other format is specified. Agent identity masking allows you to hide agent names from users during any communication. Avatar source determines the type of avatar that agents will have in the help desk. When selecting an option that includes Gravatar, the agent's Gravatar image will be displayed. Note, Gravatar is a trusted third-party website that allows you to set a globally recognized avatar which can be created on Gravatar's website. Your Gravatar avatar will be used in the help desk if your Gravatar email address is the same as your agent email address. If the agent doesn't have a Gravatar avatar, then the avatar will default to a built-in character, for example, the mystery man or a monster. If you do not want to use Gravatar avatars, then select the built-in option available, Oscars AT. This option randomly generates an avatar from a pre-created list of characters. Disable agent collaborators. If this is enabled, then agents that are added as collaborators by users will be automatically disabled. This is helpful when users are blindly adding agents to the CC field, which causes the agent to receive all of the participant alerts. In the next section, there are authentication-specific configurations available. For the agent password policy, you have two options to choose between. By default, there is a basic policy which requires the password to be at least eight characters. Alternatively, you can create complex password standards with the use of the password policy plugin. This plugin is enabled and configured at Admin Panel, Manage tab, Plugins. Once the plugin is enabled and configured, it will be available here to select as the default password policy. Allow password resets. If this option is unchecked, then the agents will not have the ability to reset their own password. Only administrators will have this ability. 
Reset token expiration is the duration for which password reset tokens will be valid. When an agent requests a password reset, they are emailed a token that will be permitted to take place. You can require multi-factor authentication by checking this box. This will provide an extra layer of authentication set up for agents when they log into the help desk. When this is enabled, they will log in with their username and password, and next they will be required to submit a token to finish logging into the help desk. To require 2FA, you will first need to enable the multi-factor authentication plugin located in the admin panel, manage tab, plugins. Agent excessive logins, this is where you will set the maximum number of failed login attempts allowed before agents are temporarily locked from signing in, as well as the amount of time that they are locked out. Agent session timeout is the amount of time that an agent can be idle in the help desk before the system automatically signs them out. You can disable this feature by entering a zero here. Then there is bind agent session to IP, which if enabled, agents will be remembered by their current IP address upon login. Next, there is the templates tab, which is where you can customize the email template messages for agent events, such as the agent welcome email, password reset emails, and two-factor authentication emails. You can also edit the sign in login banner here, which is displayed on the staff control panel. All of these templates can be edited from top to bottom. Now we can take a look at the user section where user specific configurations are available. You have the same configurations available for users as you do with agents minus the two factor authentication setting, which is only available for agents at this time. There is also a templates tab here for user account specific template messages. Again, these messages can be fully edited. Lastly, in the settings tab, there is the knowledge base section. This is where you'll configure the knowledge base of your help desk. The knowledge base is where you can store frequently asked questions that are displayed on your user portal. If enabled, the knowledge base is available for all users to see. You can remove the knowledge base section from the user portal if desired by unchecking this box. The knowledge base will still be available for agent use internally. You have the option to require users to log in to view the knowledge base by checking this box. You can disable the ability for agents to use canned responses by unchecking this box. Canned responses are pre-made replies created by agents which allow for quick answers to commonly asked questions or a specific phrasing of a response for agents to use. Canned responses are configured in the agent panel under the knowledge base section. And that's everything you'll need to know about the admin panel settings tab. For an overview of the information mentioned in this video, go to our documentation website linked below and locate the settings section. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have questions about anything or if we can be of any assistance with your help desk setup. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be a deep dive into the Manage tab. Thank you for choosing Support System to make happy.